Captain, ship spotted. What flag does it fly? Sir, it's blue with cross cannons. Governor Broadside has found us again. Who are the blue coats that Redbeard fights? Let's find out together on this episode of Harbor Master. 1989 ushered in a new era of LEGO. The iconic pirate theme was launched, introducing the Imperial faction, a group that would see many iterations in the time that followed. The first of the Imperials were the Bluecoats, also known as the Imperial Soldiers by LEGO fans. According to LEGO.com, they were inspired by the French Navy and Marines of the colonial era. The Bluecoats were essentially the good guys of LEGO Pirates. In the first year of LEGO Pirates, the Bluecoats appeared in five sets. Harbor Sentry, a small boat with a massive cannon, Caribbean Clipper, the Bluecoats' first main ship, also known as the Seahawk in the UK, Sabre Island, a small fortification, El Dorado Fortress, possibly the most iconic Bluecoat set, and Forbidden Island, which featured a Bluecoat that was locked up by pirates. In 1990, two Bluecoats appeared in a pirate minifigure pack. 1991 was the last year we would see the Bluecoats, Broadside Brig, and Lagoon Lockup. Two more small fortifications intended to be added to the previous entries would be the last of the Bluecoat specific sets. Though Rock Island Refuge also featured two Bluecoats and a small sailboat. This classic wave of Bluecoats was distinctive in several ways. Most of these sets featured yellow and white fortifications. The soldiers wore black shakos, brown backpacks, and red epaulets. They had white pants, and their torsos were inspired by colonial era uniforms. They were armed with flintlock muskets. Bluecoat officers wore tricorn hats and yellow epaulets. The Bluecoats were led by a governor, a character we'll speak more about later. The governor also had a special officer's torso. The flag of the Bluecoats was a white cross on a blue background. Cross cannons take the center stage, with a crown placed just above, and symbols reminiscent of the fleur de lis are placed in each corner. In fact, the flag is right here on my shirt, which is from Brick Monarch Shop. If you want to represent your loyalty to the Bluecoats in style, consider picking up a t-shirt, ball sign, or stickers today. Use code BRICKING10 for 10% off your purchase. In time, the Bluecoats would be replaced by the Imperial Guards, also known as the Redcoats. If the Bluecoats are believed to represent the French, the Redcoats may represent the British. At times, they even seem to be a part of the same army. While LEGO did take inspiration from history, the Pirates theme is not historically accurate, with many liberties being taken to tell this fantastical story. In 1998, the Bluecoats would appear in the game LEGO Chess, and would appear again in 2009 in the LEGO Battles video game and in Vintage Minifigure Collection Volume 3. In 2015, a new group of Bluecoats would appear. Set 40158, Pirates Chess, featured Bluecoat representations of the game's pieces. Bluecoat soldiers took the place of pawns, and a general took the role of the king. Additional sets featuring the Bluecoats were 70409, Shipwreck Defense, and 70411, Treasure Island. They also had two fortifications, with 70410, Soldier's Outpost, and 70412, Soldier's Fort. A few more Bluecoats would be featured in 70413, The Brick Bounty. The Bluecoats featured in this 2015 iteration of LEGO Pirates closely resembled those in 1989 with updated designs benefiting the more modern sets. One minor change was the soldiers wore white epaulets this time around. The Bluecoats would continue to be led by a governor, as well as an admiral. June of 2023 was a source of excitement for pirate fans, as LEGO revealed the remake of El Dorado Fortress. This set was a faithful recreation of the original, but was able to come apart, allowing you to reconfigure it however you want. It also includes a small vessel for the Bluecoats that could dock at the port. Taking a closer look, we realize this is a remake of the vessel seen in 6277 Imperial Trading Post. While classic LEGO themes leave a lot of room to tell your own stories, there's a surprising amount of lore behind the LEGO Pirates theme, especially when it comes to the blue coats. A comic was created called Golden Medallion, and four LEGO Pirates illustrated books were written and published by Ladybird, with copies still available on Amazon. The LEGO Pirates world is set in the Caribbean islands during the 18th century. In some sources, the Bluecoats are actually referred to as settlers. The first group of Bluecoats is led by Governor Broadside, who according to the books is gluttonous, short-tempered, and does not tolerate insults. He loves peace and quiet and is willing to hang pirates to get it. The governor has a sister named Prudence and a young niece called Camilla. Broadside was appointed by the king to bring law and order and deal with Captain Roger Redbeard. Broadside's main base of operation is Port Royal. 6277 Imperial Trading Post is actually called Port Royal in the UK. 
Port Royal's main line of defense is Eldorado Fortress, also known as Fort Sabre in the UK. Port Royal and Eldorado Fortress are located on the island of La Sabatina, as it's called in the German audio dramas, or just Sabatina as it's called in the books. A large island that I also assume is the home to small buildings like Broadside Brig and Lagoon Lockup. In German audio dramas, Broadside is the main villain to Redbeard's crew, and has been the governor of La Sabatina for 15 years. Redbeard refers to him as the biggest pirate of the Southern Sea, due to all the crimes Broadside has committed including embezzling money from the king and heavily taxing the citizens of Port Royal. Things get even darker in the audio dramas when we discover that Broadside wants to sell the islanders as slaves. Just an all-around messed up guy. In the audio dramas, other pirates work to help him stay in power so that a more competent leader won't take charge. Broadside's character definitely leans into the cliche of greedy, incompetent man in charge during the colonial era. In the audio dramas, there's also a handful of other characters that are a part of the Imperial Army, but they aren't super significant. To help with this pirate problem, Broadside enlisted a right-hand man, Lieutenant D. Martin. Many believe that Lieutenant D. Martin is this figure with a red beard but I disagree because his facial hair doesn't match up. Broadside would also be assisted by Admiral Woodhouse, a Redcoats leader who would take over the fight against the pirates. Woodhouse believes that Broadside is a fool. The Bluecoat settlers found buried treasure while making their new home, drawing in pirates to plunder the treasure. In the books, there are some stories and adventures that happen, but they often end up following the pattern of the Bluecoats chasing the pirates in an effort to capture them. Pirates that were captured would eventually be busted out, just as Redbeard is in this UK ad. Of course, Captain Roger got caught and was thrown into the dungeons. The following morning, Captain Roger was sentenced to walk the plank. Meanwhile, I had drifted ashore on a volcanic island. Once Captain Roger had walked the plank, the governor and his men hurried ashore, little realizing that I had rescued Roger with my raft. In addition to the Seahawk, Governor Broadside has another ship called the Iron Ram. In the Golden Medallion audio drama, Broadside has a ship called the Cannonball that is supposed to be an even larger ship than Black Sea's Barracuda. Some even argue that the ships may be the same, but neither the Cannonball nor the Iron Ram were ever made into an official Lego set. In the Lego chess video game, the Bluecoats are led by a character named Admiral Tim, who combines the face of Admiral Woodhouse with the outfit of Governor Broadside. This type of character creation is very common in the Lego Pirates media. Officers might pop up with one name, only to later show up with a different name and the same look. This happens again in LEGO Racers, where the likeness of Admiral Woodhouse is given the name Governor Broadside. For our purpose, I am choosing to consider these products of name swapping to be distinct characters. Perhaps most surprising is that the 2015 Bluecoats are actually connected to their original iteration. On the LEGO Group's website, they refer to the pirate captain as Redbeard, who was sailing the seas during the time of the original Bluecoats. The site also features a map that looks noticeably different from the original map. This might suggest that the adventures of the 2015 Pirates and Bluecoats take place around a different set of islands sometime after Broadside's first encounter with Redbeard. Our 2015 cast of Bluecoats are led by Governor Hacienda. According to his bio, he finds great pleasure in collecting taxes and gathering gold and diamonds. Whenever the Pirates steal his treasure, he gets red as a parrot and screams and shouts and flaps his arms like, well, a parrot. Governor Hacienda has a daughter, who, according to her bio, dreams of being a pirate and sailing the seven seas, but instead helps her father fight back against the pirates. She reminds me of a certain someone I've seen in movies before. Nah, I can't place it. Serving the governor is Admiral Nunsuch. Lego.com reveals that the Admiral is the highest ranking blue coat officer. This makes him a very, very important man certainly in his own eyes. His Lego quest and collect description reads, an excellent leader and swordsman, though prone to seasickness. The Admiral leads the Black Ribbon Fleet, sailing the ocean in the hope of finding and capturing his archenemy, Redbeard. 
He even has a mention in the LEGO Legacy Heroes Unboxed that states, A veritable hall monitor of the seas. None such is the guy who brings law and order to a good versus evil fight. Because of his strict approach to law enforcement, the Admiral has a deep-seated disgust of pirates, whose free-willing and usually illegal activities fly in the face of his buttoned-down ideal world. He doesn't just talk the talk when it comes to justice. One time, the first mate accidentally used the Admiral's toothbrush, and none such had him tried for treason. None such is definitely an Admiral I wouldn't want to mess with. 2023's Eldorado Fortress doesn't have as much lore around it. In the instructions, it does give us some details. Today, the new Eldorado Fortress is a thriving port, with a new governor and a regiment of trusty Imperial Guards. They're as prepared as ever to protect their tropical paradise from plundering pirates. From the deepest dungeons to the top of the main tower, the fortress is a treasure trove of mysteries and stories to be discovered. Hoist your anchor, set sail, and follow your compass to new adventures. In another spot, the designer says, The past few decades, some areas of the fortress have clearly been changed by wear and tear, and perhaps occasional encounters with pirates. Other areas have been modernized to suit the needs of the modern travelers, and help the governor keep those troublesome pirates at bay. From all this, we can take away the governor is not broadside, but a new governor who has taken over the fort. I can also assume this Eldorado fortress takes place during the same time as the LEGO Ideas Barracuda Bay set since the set is mentioned. No matter where the pirates went, the Bluecoats were there to thwart their treasure hunting. While the Imperial soldiers were definitely a favorite to many, the Bluecoats set the foundation for the world of LEGO Pirates. From their interesting appearances in legacy media, to the many sets that they were released in, the Bluecoats have earned a place of honor in the history of LEGO Pirates. I think it's time their ships get an upgrade though, because these ships are way too small. And you know, maybe all that treasure they guard could help expand Port Royal. And that's a wrap to this story. Stick around and grab a drink as we tell more stories from the high seas of LEGO Harbor Masters.